Hello and uh, welcome to this last video about uh, chapter 7, chapter 7 forecasting in the supply chain. Um, chapter 7, uh, in earlier videos we talked about the static methods of uh, forecasting, we talked about the adaptive model of uh, forecasting. In the adaptive model of forecasting there were four different methods we could use. Um, the first one was the moving average. The moving average you can use only if there is no trend or seasonality. That's also for the second one. The second one was the simple exponential smoothing. With the simple exponential smoothing we used the alpha. The Holtz model has an alpha and a beta and can be used if there is a trend but there is no seasonality. In uh, the second to last video we crossed a Winters model. The Winters model is with the alpha, the beta and the gamma and you can use Winters model when there is also seasonality involved in forecasting the uh, demand in your supply chain. Please recall that you forecast your demand on the basis of uh, the customer. Um, you, got the, um, you got the customer on the one hand and the supplier on the other hand of the whole uh, supply chain and we focus on the customer itself and we um, uh, and we carry that back through the whole uh, supply chain itself. And therefore we use on, uh, uh, the static models and in this case the time series or the adaptive models. But as there are so many um, um, possibilities of creating a forecast, you have to know what forecast method is your best forecast method. For that we use um, the measures for forecast error. As there are many measures of uh, forecast error, we will, not, uh, we will not cross them all, um, there are a couple of important uh, ones. If uh, you as a manager or uh, the supply chain manager cannot decide on what uh, measure to take, please take the mean square error, the NSE. Um, the mean square error um, should, be, uh, should be minimized uh, when there is no um, uh, forecast error that has preference over the mean square, square error. Another uh, important one is the TS, the tracking signal. The tracking signal um, has to be not over 6 or under minus 6. Uh, when it does so, that uh, signals you that uh, a possibility in change of, um, uh, uh, of forecast um, um, a change in forecast uh, uh, seasonality has, has occurred. So if it's over 6 or under minus 6, then through the tracking signal you could know what to, uh, uh, that you have to change your, uh, your forecast or your forecast method. But if you have uh, selected one of the time series, being it a simple uh, moving error uh, the simple moving average or winter's model, then you, um, then you have to come up with an, uh, an, uh, an alpha, a beta and or a gamma. And for that we can use the Excel files that, are, that accompany the book Supply Chain Management by Chopra. In the Excel file, we would like to reduce the alpha. The alpha itself is now 0.54. And as we try to uh, minimize the mean square error, in this case there is no, um, 
there is no favorability over others, we use the solver. Um, the Excel files can be found on the electronic learning environment. And this uh, solver will tell us that the constraints of, um, of cell B14, being the alpha, this one, has to be uh, the same as or smaller than 1. Um, and by doing so, and by filling in the uh, demand, the level, and the forecast, you can come up with, an, um, with a reasonable alpha. In this um, case, we can also change uh, the uh, demand, the level, and the forecast. As in earlier uh, adoptions, it was 0.54, it's now 0.32. Uh, please bear in mind that uh, the alpha and uh, the beta um, are best to be used when they are uh, 0.2 or smaller than 0.2. Um, when the alpha and the uh, beta are over 0.2, please use that only for a small period of time and uh, as they will, um, as they will, in over a longer period of time, will increase the variability of your, uh, of your forecast. So alpha and uh, uh, beta, uh, same as or smaller than 0.2. Uh, that's not true for gamma as gamma uh, can change um, over, the, uh, over the periodicity. Um, please uh, refer to the video about Winter's model if you want to know more about the gamma and the do's and the don'ts with the gamma. Um, then there is a, a small uh, bit about the IT in forecasting. As IT will en uh, enable you to, uh, to mine a lot of data, IT will help you with uh, coming up uh, with data with uh, forecasting. This is also true because with IT systems it's possible to let information flow from the uh, consumer on the one hand to the uh, supplier on the other hand, so there is no distortion in the, uh, in the information flows itself. As with all um, strategic decisions you take, um, risk management is also a very important uh, part in forecasting in the supply chain. Um, the uh, the risk management itself is, for example, the minimization of uh, forecast errors, um, but also common uh, factors such as uh, long lead times, large batch uh, sizes, um, but these are not, um, are not unique to forecasting in a supply chain itself. And if you want, you can also mitigate uh, the, the risks you take uh, by increasing responsiveness. Um, for, um, for increasing your responsiveness in your uh, supply chain, please refer to chapter two in the book Supply Chain Management of Sunil Chopra. As in uh, chapter two, we have crossed um, uh, responsiveness and implied uh, demand uncertainty uh, uh, very often. Uh, when you want to forecast in practice, um, it's important, as we told, to collaborate over the supply chain itself, to share data and um, to distinguish between demand and sales itself. Demand is uh, uh, pulled from the uh, consumer as sales are written by your sales force itself. So do you want to um, 
uh, do you want to forecast based on your consumer demand or do you want to focus on the sales of your sales force selling to the ultimate customer? Um, and that will bring us to uh, the very last slide. In the very first video, we crossed the summary of learning objectives. After all these videos, you should be able to come up with an answer to understand the role of uh, forecasting for both an enterprise and the supply chain, identify the components of a demand forecast, forecast demand in the supply chain given historical data using time series methodologies, and the last one, analyze demand forecast to estimate forecast error. If you have uh, any trouble, uh, please contact me. You can contact me through uh, email. You can contact me through um, Blackboard Collaborate. Um, thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to see you again in the coming videos. Thank you.